I've just been given this scooter here today. I dropped it off at the front door. I gave us it today to uh, repair it. Uh, it's a drive developer's uh, Cobra. Uh, and it says it won't work. It's, it's not working. The power comes on, uh, but it won't move. The chap uses this scooter um, for his golfing. But it's not really designed to go on a golf course, these scooters. But that's what he uses it for. He used it now for three years and there's no issue whatsoever. So what we're planning to do is to do a simple fault diagnostics with this scooter here to see why it won't work. Control lights are coming on. There is no flash code whatsoever. There's power coming on, but it won't drive. Nothing's happening at all. So we'll, we'll go through a, a few scenarios here. We'll check the power module, batteries, wiring room, etc. And uh, to see, try and find out what the issue is here. Okay, so close up the scooter where you can see the display. Uh, I'll switch the ignition on and tell you what's happening. Lights come on, become stationary when it's ready. It's done a system check. It says it's checked everything, everything's okay. Customer saying when he's pressing the lever to go forward, nothing happens. Uh, it's when he go back, nothing happens. So I've not checked anything on this yet. He said he's had a wee look at the brush units and they seem fine. So let me press it to go forward. I can hear the electric brake kicking on, but it's not moving. And now we've got a flash code. Let's have a look what it says. I never had a flash before, it's got a flash now. I'm waiting until this stops, and then that should give us a flash. If it doesn't stop, this is a pain to be honest with you. Oh, hang on a minute. So we count these. One, two, three, four, five, six, so it's six. So what we need to then do is go to drive developers, look at the flash code, or the back of the scooter's off here, and it, it shows us what kind of control box we have. Now that's very important that we know what kind of control box we have, because the flash code alters with what type of box it's on the main power module. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So let's have a look at the control box to see which, which one it is. Right, in the back of the scooter, underneath the shroud, is the main control box here. This particular one is a Rhino 2. Okay, a Rhino 1 which is just a rhino, which is a kind of bluish purple box with kind of fins on it, cooling fins on it. Uh, the black one is a rhino 2. Um, generically, the rhino 2 has, from the manufacturers, out different fault codes. So their six flash fault code from the manufacturers, which is dynamic, um, would be six. Check that the throttle pod or your wig wag lever is in neutral on power up. That means when you switch it on. But we switched it on and the fault code didn't come until we pressed it. So to double make sure um, that that fault code actually means that, don't just take it for granted that that's what it means, we want to go and see what the manufacturers of this product have, have told the control box what to flash. Now, if you go on to a, a link that I'm going to put down below this one, there'll be a link to the flash code for this particular scooter with this. Rhino 2 controller to tell you actually what all the flash codes mean on this product, which is the Drive Developers Cobra. Um, and it will not be the same for every single one that is fitted with this Rhino 2 controller. Maybe slightly similar, but maybe different, so you always need to check. So that's why you need to know what control box is fitted on it. So on this particular one, if I have a look at my phone, it says here, Six LED green, motor voltage error. So it tells me there's a problem with the voltage of the motor. I've not used any fancy tools. I've just used what the scooter is telling me. So, voltage voltage error, motor uh, or its wiring is faulty. Check the paddle. The paddle is the wee lever that you make you go. Is calibrated and check for open or short circuits. That means it's saying to you, check either the voltage to the motor, there's a problem, uh, to see if there's a problem, check all the wires, connections, brush units, very important. And with the paddle, what it means is, on the previous video that I've done, was checking the throttle pods to see if there's a dead spot on that throttle pod. Um, so that means we've got to check the motor as well as the throttle pod up there, because maybe it's, it's set all right when we switch it on, 
but as soon as we pull the lever, it may find a dead spot. It's not moving um, the scooter at all. So we'll just we'll just go from there and see. There's my phone backing at me there. We'll just see and do a few uh, fault finding uh, on the motor, and then we'll have a look on the the um, the wee levers. Now, what I've also had noticed is before when I was trying to get the scooter to go and trying to bring it in, I couldn't drive it in. That's why I had to push it in. But then when I gave it another wee go earlier on, it started to, it was moving. It was jerking. So the, the jerking motion would kind of tell me that there's a problem with the brushing that's in the motor rather than the throttle pod. If it's jerking, it wants to go, it won't go, it wants to go, it won't go. Um, as well, don't get me wrong, sometimes you could get that with the transaxle where the gears join together when they're slipping and but I can't even hear the motor turning so it's not even the motor wants to turn so I'm going to first of all have a look at um, the brush in it, unscrew it and I'll bring you a little bit closer so you can actually see what's happening here so that's a close-up of your your dynamic Rhino and it's got a wee 2 there, Rhino 2 and there's a wee Rhino logo there um, so that's your Rhino 120 amp uh, controller there, it needs a big current rating for a heavy duty scooter. So what I'm going to do is, because it's telling me to check the voltage, I'm actually going to check the continuity, uh, I'm going to take this cover off, check the continuity uh, of the motor to make sure there's no issues there, and then what I'll do is I'll take a, a brush unit out just to check the brush units. Right, so what I'll do now is I'll remove the, the cover for all the connectors. Now I'm sure my customer has advised me that he's already had a wee look in here and he said he smelt burning. So, there we go, the three screws will take the cover off. And right enough, you do, you do smell burning. So what we want to do is, ah, let's have a look at all the connections, which are very important, especially the motor connections. There's a wee retaining clip in there, so all you have to do is press it down and pull it out. And what I want to check is all the terminals. We want to check the terminals in here, and they're lovely and clean. So that is your, your battery one. Okay, and this is your motor one. Now if you have a look in here, you can see it has been burning. So it's a bad connection in here. It's burnt, simple. And let's, oh yeah, I can even smell it worse now. So it's burnt here. Now I'm gonna undo these two screws and have a look inside and show you inside the controller. Right, so I've got the right tool to undo these screws here. And have a wee look at the, the other terminal of that connection. Let's take these out. This connection here is from the wires from the front of the tiller, which is clean. This one here is your programmer or your diagnostics. And this is for your electric brake. Oh, I. Now, I hope you can see in here, you can see the three there's three of them there, that one's clean, that one's clean, that one's clean, but this one you can't even see it. Let's get some light on the subject here. I think you can see that now. It's all burnt. In my opinion, we need a new controller and a harness. Now a lot of people will say that harness is part of the motor, so it's going to get quite complicated. Shall we just change the connection there? We could do, change the connection and put it back on. Let me have a look closely inside here. Yeah, it's fairly melted in there. Not too bad, mind you, but it is. So I need to speak to the customer to see what he wants to do here. Uh, to see if he wants to replace the controller or just put a new terminal connection in here 
and hope for the best to make sure the connection's properly. That, in my opinion, is just going to be a temporary repair. You'll be saying, what am I going to do now? It's burnt in here. And it has definitely got a burnt smell to it. And it's burnt at the back there. Now, this particular customer uses this particular scooter for a golf buggy. He doesn't use it for getting about the streets. He's got a, a walking stick. Just makes him easier. The connection for the, the motor here, you can't really buy them. You've got to buy the whole motor to get that connector. But we actually have one or two terminals that we can replace this with. So it's not the, the best repair. I'm not going to guarantee him that it's going to last. Um, but it will be a better connection. It could have been slack. Therefore, it caused the two bits of metal to constantly move and to arc. Therefore, causing heat. Therefore, causing burning and melting inside there. Uh, these can be quite expensive because these are the main power module and of course the motor will be expensive, heavy duty four pole motor. So I'm going to speak to the customer, see what, he's do, what he wants to do. I know for a fact he doesn't want to spend a lot of money. So I reckon what he's going to do is going to tell me just change that uh, terminal inside there and then it may work, it may not work. But uh, short video we found out what the problem was very quickly. It's never usually like that. Sometimes it's more difficult. Um, let's just take a, a, a brushing out just to see the condition of a brushing it. But I personally think uh, the burning is, is a key sign. So let's get the camera down here. Right, so I'm going to take a I'm brushing it out, and he's already been at this. Yeah, they seem to be coming in and out very nicely. Uh, as you can see as well as, the brush is broken on this. So it's no making a proper contact. That's on one of them. Let's have a look at another one. So there is a few problems in sight there. As you can see here as well, this spring's just about gone. It's it's no it's not just the best, is it? The way it is, the shape of it. Wearing it's okay coming down there as you can see. But I'm not too keen on the spring that it's just about to go. Now let me have a look inside the commutator if I can to see the colour. Yeah, it's golden in there, it's not too bad. I'm going to take... Um, I'm going to take the bottom brush out. And that just fell out there. Right, as you can see the difference, the bottom the spring's okay. Also, the wear on it's all right. As you can see the difference from the bottom brush to that brush. That one's just about going, and that one is gone. No spring left in there. That's going the same way as that, and it'll work its way around. So I'll definitely need a set of brushes, and I'll speak to him regarding uh, that connection. So there you go. I hope this short video and explanation and having to have a wee look to see what the problem is was informative to you. Uh, down below there'll be a link to this particular Rhino fault code. And remember, not all Rhino 2s are identical. It will be very close, uh, i.e. with a flash code, but 
this rhino is on lots of products now. So if you're not 100% sure, check. The one that I'm putting down below will be for the Cobra. As a matter of fact, I'll put a couple of links. I'll put the generic one for the Dynamic um, Rhino 2. I'll see if I can find the Rhino 1 as well, just in case you come across the Rhino 1. Uh, and the Rhino 2, and then the Rhino 2 for this particular scooter. And I'll actually say, I'll actually put next to it Cobra, so you actually know where it is. There'll be a link there to our website, and I'll try and put some more uh, different controllers and the, you know, the fault codes for them. But remember, not all the fault codes are 100%. Have a look at a link um, to, to the particular manufacturers, what they have done. And usually when you've got the owner's manual, you can have a wee look. So again, if you'd like to like and subscribe, that I would appreciate that. And uh, hopefully it's not going to be uh, too long till I put another video up. So you take care, stay safe, bye-bye.